What's going on everybody and welcome back to the Western Carolina AD series here on the Franchise Gurus channel. I am your host John J Gaming and today we are going on the road to play against the UNC Greenboro Spartans. They're currently 1-0 in conference play as of right now. We got a nice shiny 4-0 and we're 16-1 overall. You know, doing really good in general this season. But you know, we're going to go out... You know, can't take these guys for granted. They're the only undefeated team left. You know, so let's just do what we do. Make sure we take care of business. Should be a really good one regardless. Now, if you like Hollywood sports in general like I do, I would encourage you to smash that like button as well as subscribe to the Franchise Guru's YouTube channel as well for more content in those regards. Let's go ahead and take on the Spartans from UNC Greenboro. With all that being said, it's time to get things underway here, man. As we tip things off, the Spartans from UNC Greenboro winning the tip off. You know, we'll see what they do here with their first possession. Go try to swing it around. Nice little move in the inside, and that's how Greensboro gets their first points of the day. You know, as they do get off to a pretty solid start. As uh, we're all tied up at two now, but Maya is going to take it up court. No one's going to cover him. He's going to switch the three from deep. Making it a 5-2 ball game. Nice uh, nice start for the Catamounts. As now Tyson Glenn on the inside trying to guard the post. And you know these Spartans are killing us early on with the post game. As we try to get the steal. It doesn't work out for us. Thankfully we do force the miss. As now here comes your Catamounts coming down the court. Tyson Glenn going to try to pass it out to Perkins. Who gets open on that mid-range jumper. It is good. And now, 9-6, to six, we got another steal, and here come those Catamounts yet again. Perkins taking it off the backboard, actually. Some Tim Duncan action right there. As the Catamounts still hold a lead, but the Spartans looking to take it right back, and they do. Emphatic slam, tying this game up at 11. And now, here come the Spartans, another bucket for these guys. And don't look now, the Catamounts just might be on upset alert. Oh, down by two, and this could improve to a four-point lead. The Catamounts on the back end of a 9-0 run by Greensboro. As we're looking to claw ourselves back into the lead. Perkins taking it up court, going to pass it back out. Devin's, oh, actually it's Marcus O'Neal in the corner. It's good. Another three-point ball for the Catamounts. As we got a tightly contested ball game here. 17 to 15. Greensboro really showing some fight as we get into the lane with Coco Bomaye. Philbert Fitz is quite the random name that the game decided to generate, but he's calling for the foul. Coco Bomaye does make both free throws as Greensboro is going to try to kick it back inside. They do. That was Fitz with the bucket. And now still only a two point lead. A little bit of a turnaround jumper that's missed, but Tyson Glenn gets called for the bat foul on the rebound. As this center does misses the first free throw. Let's see if he does end up making the second one. And it is no good. And that's a good sign for the Catamounts because that means we can push, of course, to Henderson. What a dunk for the center, true sophomore. And now, still halfway through this her first half. Still a very close game, only up by three points. You know, the Spartans really giving us everything that they have in this game. There's another mid-range jumper for the Spartans. A 23-22 ball game. As the balls turn over, here comes Coco Bomaye with the emphatic slam. Going the other way. Bomaye showing out 10 points in this first half. As now we're going to try to pass it to O'Neal, who does kick it back out. Back to Henderson, though, as Henderson's going to take it in, in the teeth of the de defense and get at least draw the foul. Henderson was able to make both free throws as we nearly force another turnover, but this time it deflects back to their point guard. As now they're going to pass it to the corner, back over to Philbert Fitz, who draws the foul on Anderson and draws two more free throws. So now only a two-point game here. It could be tied, though, and it certainly is. That's Edwards of UNC Greenboro making the bucket. 
A very tight, contested ball game here. Only a three-point game as the Catamounts are trying to run once again, trying to force a rhythm, and you can't leave Coco Bomaye wide open. As they're, you know, he's going to hit those nine times out of ten if he's open like that. As now Teeters is going to pa we're gonna pass it around a little bit, see if we can get a little bit of motion going. Mackey with the ball, going to try to switch things up. Now Samuel to Bomaye, going to get it in there. Does he get the bucket? No, but does get the board and does force the foul on Robert Spears. As that's how this first half is going to go down with Coco Bomaye making those two free throws. Your Catamounts from Western Carolina University do make it make it an eight-point game in the locker room as we have doubled them up on rebounds but have struggled with turnovers. The, um, you know, Greensboro doing a good job of that. Only four turnovers, whereas Western Carolina has eight. You know, so got to definitely clean that up in the second half if we want to pull away and win this one. As now, first, you know, for, not first and ten. I'm thinking football. Basketball, we're in the second half, though. Silly me. As they try to roll a lob, but it does not work out for them. Sam Perkins driving the other way, going teeth in between two guys. Able to get that one to fall. Now it's a six-point game. As we go to Bomaye, he was pulling up from the SoCon logo. Able to get that one to go. And before a blink of an eye, it's a ten-point lead. See what the Spartans do. They go inside and draw a foul on Sam Perkins. But we still are pulling away here. 11 point game right now. About to be 13 with a bucket from Tyson Glenn. The Catamounts really trying to put a dagger in these guys early. But Greensboro is going to fight back. Cutting it to 9 there. But again, we're going to pass things around. Make sure that they don't come back here now. Glenn with another mid-range jumper. So a 14 point ball game as now they are desperate trying to get um, a quick turnover but instead it's going to be Sam Perkins going coast to close nobody really trying to stop ball and it really showed there as Marcus O'Neill will now be called for their first foul still a 14 point game Catamounts up 65 to 51 now well nice little post move but it's off the mark Catamounts are going to try to push now that they got in the hands of their point guard, Sam Perkins. Passes to Bomaya. It's a double team, but they leave Perkins open. And that's our best three-point shooter that they decide to leave all alone. You definitely cannot do that. That is just terrible basketball IQ. And now it's a 15-point game. Bomaya going to pass it back to Sam Perkins again, who gets another three-pointer to fall. You know, and now... We're just putting our stamp on this game. Tyson Glenn going to pull up from the mid-range again. Doesn't make the shot, but does get called for the foul. Is able to make both free throws. It's an 18-point ball game here. Spartans just can't do anything right in this second half. As they do try to go into the deep defense. They get that one to go. They need a lot more of those in this game. But they simply just did not get it. As they do get another bucket on, on the other end. And now, about minute 30 left. Still down by 14. Just need a miracle to come back as they get that one to fall. But nevertheless, they um just can't close the gap soon enough. They have to start turning this to a free throw game. And that's where the hopes and dreams end. Your Catamounts do go away with a 78-64 victory. Over to UNC Greensboro Spartans in SoCon play. So checking out the stats for our guys here today. And Coco Bomaye was named your player of the game. He had 20.7 boards, 3 assists, and a block. Dude was definitely balling out. Sam Perkins was off to a little bit of a slow start. But he really got going in the second half. He ended up with 19 points and 4 assists today. Samuel chipped in with 11 points and 4 rebounds. Tyson Glenn did have a double-double today with 10 points and rebounds as well as three assists on top of that. And Anthony Henderson, you know, who's not really known for his scoring, you know, he got 10 points today, eight of them, I'm pretty sure, being in the first half. On the downside, though, we didn't really get much production from our bench. Marcus O'Neill was our leading bench scorer today with only five points. And then Bryce Wilder, you know, in garbage time, he got, he got a free to go. 
I'm pretty sure that's his first three points of the season, to be honest. But other than that, really didn't get much production from the bench. And, you know, we need to do we need to have more production from our bench players, you know, if we are going to beat better teams down the road. So we go ahead and sim a few games after we take care of business against UMC Spartans. And, you know, we win against Samford, win against Ewan, win against Davidson. But Sam Samford was able to pull off the upset, though. We They were only a few points away. And, you know, it did uh, score more points than us in the second half. But we were able to hold on. Coco Bamaya led us in scoring that day. You know, Devin Samuel was a good compliment, though. And, you know, the rest of the team, like I said, did just enough in order to win the game. Sam Perkins, though, only had one point, though, which is interesting. But... He was out there dropping dimes. He had seven assists out there on the floor. Against E1, we go back to our more dominating Lazos. We win 80 to 59. Devin Samuel led the team in scoring with 26, but Tyson Gwynn also came through with 20 points, 14 rebounds, which nine of them were offensive boards. So this man dominated the glass for us for sure. Coco Bomaye also chipped in with 13 points as well. Finally, the last game that we simmed was against Davidson on the road, and it looked like we were at home, it seemed like, because we destroyed those guys. Davidson even only scored 17 points in the second half, which is, you know, pretty sad if I say so myself. Marcus O'Neill, though, did go come through going off from for 24 points, coming off the bench as well. And then, you know, Sam Perkins, he chipped in 20. Coco Bomai hit 18. And Devin Samuel also had 16 points. It was a great win for the Western Carolina Catamounts. So now, this is what our conference standings do look like going into rivalry week. Western Carolina is the class of this conference. Currently sitting at 20-1 on the season with an 8-0 conference record. With, you know, Georgia Southern's not too far behind, but they're 12-8 overall. Wofford is 7-2 with a 15-7 overall record, but it right now it seems like we're in a class of our own, and I certainly was not expecting the you know success that we are certainly having in this season whatsoever. It has been an absolute dream come true for us thus far. So then next episode will be a double header special. We'll play Appalachian State, you know, two times in a row. We'll go at Appalachian State on Monday. And then a few days later, we'll come back and host our rivals in the SoCon Conference, you know, on Saturday. Should be a really good one. If you do enjoy the content here on this channel, I encourage you to smash that like button as well as subscribe if you happen to be new. This is John Jake Gaming on the mic, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.